You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live uncommon. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be an Air Force chaplain? And we get to share a wonderful story with you today, um, which is really kind of neat because there's a KFUO connection in this story. And so, so delighted to get to share this story with you today. Joining us today, Chaplain John Smithley, U.S. Air Force active duty. Chaplain Smithley, thank you so much for being our guest on the Coffee Hour. Good morning, and uh, thank you for allowing me to gather here and to be with you and to uh, just dialogue and to share a story of encouragement and hope and peace that comes to us in the entire world in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So thank you for having me today. Amen. We are just delighted to have you with us and uh, welcome officially to the coffee hour. I understand you've got your coffee, so you're ready for <laughs> the coffee hour. Uh, do you have a go-to? What's your What's your coffee, your favorite coffee to go to to get you started in the morning? So when I was in college at uh, Central Michigan University and then Fort Wayne Seminary, I would do the 100% Colombian bold. As I've gotten older, I don't need as much of a <laughs> kick and start, so I have the morning, uh, the morning light brew. <laughs> so you got your coffee, you're ready to go. Sarah's uh, all excited because uh, you mentioned Michigan as yes. well. So Sarah's a Michigan native as well. I love uh, anything from Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> so... So, Chaplain, tell us about your path that that led to the military. What? Tell us about how you ended up in the military. Okay, so I was born and raised in Newport News, Virginia, so southeastern Virginia, pretty close to the Chesapeake Bay and Atlantic Ocean uh, to the east, and just to the west was the James River. And it's a large military, the Hampton Roads. You have Norfolk Naval uh naval base on one side of the river, closer to the Atlantic and Chesapeake Bay. And then where I grew up, we have Langley Air Force Base, Fort Eustis, which is now, both of those are a joint base together, the Naval Weapons Station in Yorktown. So I just grew up in a very large military area and growing up there as a child, going to church and so on, we could see sometimes the, uh, the air show that the Air Force would put on uh, just a few miles down the road at Langley Air Force Base. And then Langley would also once a year come to our church and the uh, orchestra and band would play there. The Air Combat Command Band would play at our church. So I was always motivated and encouraged and inspired uh, by the Air Force Base and the, the Air Force just down the road. And that's what I chose to join and enlist right out of high school in 1992. I enlisted in Went to basic training there in June of 1992. So I just had a close connection proximity-wise, but a love for the Air Force because it was right there in my backyard. Mm-hmm. What was uh, what was spiritual life like uh, while serving in the Air Force? So as soon as I got, and what was neat about that is as soon as I graduated basic training from Lackland Air Force Base at about 10 or 11 August of 1992, I was direct duty to my first active duty base because our tech school was closed that year. So I was direct duty straight to Scott Air Force Base, which is about 19 miles east of St. Louis and the Mississippi River. So I go straight to Scott Air Force Base and they didn't even know I was coming. And it was probably a Friday. I got there at one or two o'clock to Lambert International Airport and I called the base and said, I need a ride to Scott. And I'm one of your new troops. They didn't even know I was coming. So, uh, but I didn't know any better either, uh, but that's how I got to Scott. And as soon as I got there, I got a room in the dorm and I met within a few days, met a few Christians there because they were going to go to chapel that very, you know, in one or two days. So I met them. And then those same two guys uh, invited me to the Tuesday night Bible study in the dorm. So I got a part of that. And those three gentlemen that I met in 1992, we are still friends and brothers in Christ today, and our families are still pretty close. Those are my first three friends that I made in the Air Force, and I was around chapel and the dorm Bible study, and 
we've we have kept friends for the last 28 and a half years, uh, all three of those families, including mine, to be the fourth family. So I was plugged into Bible study and chapel. I didn't have a car yet, so I just went to chapel on base. And uh, as part of my worship life and so on, but the Bible study. But one of those gentlemen that befriended me, he was a little older than me. He'd been there three or four months before me. He's the one, Dave Abruzze, said, hey, you need to listen to 8.50 a.m. KFUO every afternoon because there's Don Madsen and issues, et cetera. And, and I would. I would listen to that every afternoon. And then eventually I would start listening to uh, the Saturday morning Bible study, I believe at that time, by Pastor Mark Hawkinson from KFUO. And so that's that's how I was introduced to KFUO, and uh, which was really the way that God opened me to Lutheranism, because I didn't grow up Lutheran. So what did you learn while listening to KFUO? Well, I remember vaguely, I believe the talk show might have been Monday through Friday with Don Madsen, Issues, etc. And it might have been one or maybe even a two-hour program at that time. But what I first started to hear from issues, et cetera, on KFUO was solo gratia, solo fide, solo scriptura, solo Christus, you know, the grace alone, faith alone, scripture alone, Christ alone, and of course then the solo Deo Gloria, glory to God alone, so the five solas. And, and I was learning some of that. I was taking a music class, 151 at Belleville Area College, as soon as I started to get at Scott and go to uh, night classes. And in that music class, they were studying uh, Johann Sebastian Bach and Beethoven. And a lot of those musicians then would sign their music at the end, SDGs, Solo Deo Gloria. So these things were starting to connect here and uh, really opening the way for me to become Lutheran. And I didn't even know it at that time. But those those were some of the things that I was hearing on the the radio station of KFUO and issues, et cetera, Don Matzett, and then also Pastor Mark Hawkinson. But so were my buddies also listening to KFUO, and some of them became Lutheran. And one of the gentlemen that we met at a civilian church, uh, I want to say his name was Larry Funk, but he became a uh, elder at this Lutheran church probably 10, 15, 20 years later there in Southern Illinois. And so there's an amazing story here that I'll, we'll get into a little bit in the middle and, and near the end of today's conversation, where God is gonna take me to college and seminary. And then my first church was back to Southern Illinois District, not too far from St. Louis Seminary and KFUO. So it's amazing how God brings this full circle here, 360 degrees. Hmm. That is that is an incredible start to the, the to the story. How was KFUO uh, formative, and and how how did all of this uh, theological uh, education that you were getting over the airwaves? How did that uh, move you forward into uh, into the seminary? So when I get I, I was at Scott Air Force Base the first time, enlisted from 1992 to 1996. I was deployed once in those four years, so I was away. But I would listen to KFUO issues, et cetera, the Bible studies, the music, and, and so on. And it really fed me and, and gave exactly what I needed, uh, spiritually giving me Christ and, and his word. And eventually it would lead me to become Lutheran and get confirmed and, and so on. But also my friends were also listening to these Bible studies and uh, talk shows and and just having our the eyes of our heart and mind opened. And another thing that did help that issues etc. was send out a monthly journal, monthly or quarterly, but I think it was monthly. They would send out a journal, their mailing list, and me and my friends, my friends and I would uh, read those and study and and talk about them. And I still have all of those journals today in a box somewhere because we just moved, but I still have all of those <laughs> journals from the early 90s uh, talking about infant baptism and the Lord's Supper and 
monergism and so on. And I still have that. And it's exactly what I was looking for. Hmm. So tell us about uh, what led up to seminary. Who encouraged you to consider seminary and, and that become a, a path for you? Because you served in the, in the military for a while, right? Before you went to seminary. Is that correct? Correct. I was enlisted at Scott for four years. And then I met my future wife there at Scott. She was in the, uh, a civilian going to school at Michigan State. But I met her in St. Louis through friends at Scott and through tennis. But I met Amy in 1994, and she was in LCMS, uh, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, uh, at Michigan State, going to uh, Martin Luther Chapel under Pastor Dave Dressel at that time. But I met Amy, and we dated for two and a half years. And in 1996, when I got out of active duty, we got married in uh, Macomb, Michigan, at St. Peter Lutheran Church, which is a huge LCMS congregation up there. Mm -hmm. We get married, and I go to Central Michigan University in Mount Pleasant to finish my bachelor's degree uh, in about two years because I'd gone to night school at Scott at Belleville Area College then. Now it's called Southwestern Illinois College. And then at Mount Pleasant, Michigan, at Zion Lutheran Church and Christ the King Lutheran Chapel, under the Reverend Thomas Zimmerman, our pastor, that was our first pastor as a married couple. I worked with him for two years. I was confirmed, led some Bible studies, but he encouraged me to check out both seminaries, and I did. We traveled to St. Louis three, two or three times, and then we went to Fort Wayne Seminary once, and that was in college, and as part of the Lutheran Student Fellowship, one of their meetings, uh, weekend conferences was at Fort Wayne Seminary, and Pastor Zimmerman had me and my wife go to that with, with the college kids as well. And that one visit to Fort Wayne Seminary, and of course, Pastor Tom Zimmerman had me meet Scott Clems and Scott Stigemeyer, who were admission counselors at Fort Wayne. But because of that one visit, and from that, as soon as I graduated college in 1998 in December, I enrolled into Fort Wayne Seminary the very next semester, uh, the spring of 1999. So Pastor Zimmerman was a huge blessing and, and counsel and, and stared me a little bit. He, he had me check out both seminaries, but, but because of his influence and support and uh, his faithful teaching there to God's word, uh, I ended up going to Fort Wayne Seminary uh, because of that pastor, Pastor Tom Zimmerman. This, your story speaks volumes about uh, the the importance of pastors building those those meaningful relationships, especially with with young people in their parish, and and what this says about campus ministry as well. Mm -hmm. We have more to learn about Pastor Smithley's story. You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. You're a miracle. You know that, right? A living, breathing, one-of-a-kind miracle. You were created to stand apart, to share your gifts in the service of others, to make an uncommon impact in a common world. And at Concordia University, it's our mission to help you do that, to live uncommon. To learn more about Concordia, go to cuw.edu. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Today we're talking with Chaplain John Smithley of the U.S. Air Force Active Duty, learning his story, and it's a, a great story uh, to to learn about what the the path to becoming a chaplain. And um, just excited because there's a, a connection to KFUO in this story as well. Uh, before we went to break, Chaplain, you were sharing with us the, your story of how KFUO played. <clears throat> a significant role in in your formation as a a Lutheran and how the the great teaching that you heard on KFUO radio was 
um, just so valuable to you in, and that uh, helped you connect to uh, understanding uh, salvation by grace through faith in Jesus and, uh, and connecting you to a congregation as well. And the people in the congregation, the, the, the pastor and others were, were helpful. And uh, it sounds like there was a, a young woman in the congregation who also <laughs> was a great connection for you as well. Um, so where we left off, you went to college and, and had the great support of a pastor there while you were in college that led you to seminary to study. Tell us about your, your years of formation at Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne. How did they prepare you for what was next, parish ministry and then eventually military chaplaincy? Okay. And, and one of the, you know, we always say hindsight is twenty twenty. So looking back, <laughs> so while I'm at Central Michigan University, tr- transferring there as a, as a junior under uh, Pastor Tom Zimmerman at Zion Lutheran Church and Christ the King Lutheran Chapel there on campus in Mount Pleasant, Pastor Tom Zimmerman's oldest son, Luke Zimmerman, is also going to college there and we're about the same age, uh, we're in the same year, year-wise in college. Well, not only do I go to seminary in 1999 in Fort Wayne, so does my friend from Mount Pleasant, Luke, Luke Zimmerman, Pastor Tom and Marsha Zimmerman's oldest son. And so he goes to Fort Wayne, so we continue that friendship. And uh, Luke Zimmerman is a very, very bright, intelligent person, uh, academia, and scholar, very strong. So I leaned on him, but we were friends at Mount Pleasant at the chapel there and the church there in in town. And we had that same friendship and to encourage each other with our studies at Fort Wayne Seminary. And so I go to seminary and so does Pastor Zimmerman's oldest son at that time. And and I believe Pastor Zimmerman and his wife, Marsha, I believe Pastor Zimmerman's retired now, but their youngest son also uh, went to seminary, uh, Jonathan. John Zimmerman also. So we have this friendship. We go to Fort Wayne Seminary, and, and Luke Zimmerman helps me with summer Greek there in 1999 <laughs> with Dr. Charles Gieschen, because I didn't know what I was getting myself into, <laughs> where some of the gentlemen had gone to the Concordia Universities and did pre-seminary. I didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Luke Zimmerman and I were friends and remained friends during seminary, and uh, he helped me quite a bit. But what I enjoyed at Fort Wayne Seminary was the field education and working in the local churches there, you know, your field education church, your field education supervisor, visiting the nursing homes there in Fort Wayne, the hospitals. And I also got to visit the Lutheran homes in in, in Ohio, just across the border there. I believe in Wasi in Ohio and Napoleon, but I would go out and visit uh, people in the nursing homes and stuff like that as a part of my field education. And then in the seminary and at the seminary, you're learning the the theology and the doctrine and the systematics and all the stuff that you need to keep building that foundation, which really began in 1992 in St. Louis with KFUO and Issues Etc., Don Madsen and Pastor Mark Hawkinson. And so these things, they they're always connected. And and yet God was using faithful LCMS pastors at every step of the way to encourage and to enlighten me and and share things and definitely to encourage and steer and point and push. And and thanks be to God that that's exactly uh, where my heart was. So where did this journey take you uh, after seminary into uh, military chaplaincy? So. When I got out of active duty, enlisted in 1996 and got married and went to college, that was a busy summer, leaving active duty, getting married and starting college all in about 30 days. Hmm. I stayed in the reserves during college. I was stationed at Battle Creek, Michigan, while I went to Central Michigan University. Then during seminary, I, I stayed enlisted in the reserves of the Guard. During my seminary years, I even deployed once out of the seminary. In 2002, but I stayed enlisted and was accruing those years in the reserves. So when I get ordained on June 22nd, 2003, uh, at Zion Lutheran Church in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, 
uh, by the circuit counselor, Pastor uh, Koki at that time. Um, I was still enlisted in, in the Air National Guard, so I transferred back to Scott Air Force Base, one year enlisted. That was 2003 to 2004 as a staff sergeant. And I was serving in my dual parish there in Southern Illinois as an LCMS pastor. So staying enlisted all those years during college and seminary, and then now as an ordained pastor, I was looking for a slot to become a chaplain in the Air National Guard. And I thought it would be at Scott or Springfield, Illinois, but it actually came from Peoria, Illinois. In mid, mid, mid year of 2004, uh, LCMS pastor, who's also a chaplain in the Air National Guard in Peoria, calls me out of the blue. Uh, that's Pastor Joseph Murphy, and also a chaplain. He says, John, I hear you're trying to become a chaplain in the Guard, and I'm leaving Peoria to go to Parker, Colorado to take a call. And then he would transfer also his chaplaincy out to the Buckley in Colorado. Well, he calls and says, there's going to be an opening up here in Peoria, I hear you want to be a chaplain. You should come up here and interview. And the following day I go and I interview with the wing commander there in Peoria, Colonel William Robertson, who we call Colonel Robbie. And I get hired as a chaplain there in the Air National Guard, which I did from 2004 to 2009 while serving as a Missouri Senate pastor in Southern Illinois District. So not only could I not open the door to the chaplaincy? I couldn't even find it, but God provided a Missouri Senate pastor to call me. I didn't even know him and say, there's going to be an opening here because I'm leaving. And God provided an open door and the door itself, me becoming a chaplain in the Air National Guard. So what has chaplaincy been like? What, what's been most challenging about serving as a chaplain? So in the Air National Guard, it was challenging because my base was about four to four and a half hours away from where I lived in Pinckneyville, Illinois. Uh, but I, I didn't mind driving. I was a lot younger then, but I would drive up to drill weekends once a month. And the wing commander there let me do Friday, Saturday, because Saturday night I had to drive back and be in the pulpit Sunday morning at my dual parish. That was a challenge to, to drive that many hours, but but I had the zeal and the energy at that time and the passion, uh, and I loved serving in Peoria, Illinois. It was a great base, and that was my first base as a chaplain in the reserves, and uh, loved the people. The challenge was I wasn't close proximity, though, to that base and the local people, even though those people lived near the base and had been there many years. That's how the guard works. But I did love the opportunity to serve and grow, and I, that's where I was given my beginning. And like I said, I did that from 2004 to 2009. And then in 2009, I left my dual parish. I took a call through the uh, Ministry to Armed Forces to go on active duty as a chaplain, where I could focus on, on one thing, and that's active duty military chaplaincy. And so I did that in July of 2009. So it's been over 11 years now. The challenge on active duty is that we move every two, sometimes three, sometimes four years, which is a long time for an officer. But, but by the time you learn the people, their families, develop the relationships, you're normally going to get orders and, and be leaving. So that's a challenge on active duty. Uh, my family and I, we're, we're not opposed to moving. We, we enjoy it. Um, looking back, Amy and I have been, we got married in 96. We have five children, two are in college, three are at home. We homeschool, uh, but they're all over the country. One's in Michigan, Michigan state, our son, one's at Concordia, uh, Seward, Nebraska. So we keep leaving kids all over the state where we've lived and we keep <laughs> moving. Why is it important for uh, chaplains to serve alongside uh, our men and women in the armed forces? There's a real need for, I could say, spirituality, morality, ethics. We look at families, marriages, our single people. 
but I don't normally speak that way as a Missouri Senate pastor. Uh, there, there's a real need for Jesus Christ. His love, his forgiveness, his death, his resurrection, to be baptized into Christ's death and resurrection, to know Christ and to have forgiveness and salvation. There's a need for that in our country and certainly in the armed forces. And there's, there's a definitely a void there uh, in our armed forces. People are are literally dead in their sins, and you see it in the pain in their faces and in their bodies and their souls and minds. You see it in their marriages and families and their careers. And and when we get to preach the clear gospel, the pure gospel of Christ, by his innocent blood, his death and resurrection, and, and we're doing Bible studies, and we're doing confirmation classes and baptizing people and, and so on, there, there's a real hunger for Christ. And there's a need. Um, a lot of times we don't have to preach the law at certain times because the law is already spoken to them and, and they need the clear comfort of the gospel and Christ and salvation. When people deploy and, and, and go to war, we have their attention. And so we get to come in and give the word of God and, and Bibles and invite them to our Bible studies and to our worship services, and, and they're given Christ. And, and so there's, there's a lot of joy in that. The Chaplain Smith, please, thank you so much for sharing your story with us and, uh, and, and for your service as well. It's mm-hmm. been a delight to, to learn your story, what it's like to be a, a chaplain for the U.S. Air Force. Thanks for being our guest on the Coffee Hour. Thank you, and God bless KFUO. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.